Good afternoon, Chairpersons. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, the organizers, for giving me this opportunity. I have been given the task to um, task of uh, reading this article, uh, comment uh, in the uh, identifying patients for adjuvant therapy after uh, nephrectomy, which was uh, published in uh, September in uh, 2022 by Umberto Capaccino. He is from Italy. So, sorry, sir. So, to introduce, surgery is a standard of care still for the non-metastatic renal cell carcinoma. And uh, unfortunately, in the locally advanced disease and the high-grade disease, what we see, almost 30% of the patient will uh, recur either locally or distantly yeah, in a very short period of time, less than two years. So, several uh, studies have been conducted using the VEGF and the mTOR inhibitors, but uh, they have shown some uh, shorter benefits in the DFS, but uh, not a consistently overall survival benefits when compared to placebo. So uh, the author has basically commented on the two uh, trials which, which were recently published in 2022 in the Lancet, uh, the Keynote 564 and the Emotion 10 uh, trial. So the basically these two trials, uh, uh, they are randomized control trials. One was, uh, both are with the immune checkpoint inhibitors, where a good number of patients were there, 994 in the Keynote and 778 here. So the first one was with the pembrolizumab, uh, 200 milligrams IV, when it was compared with placebo. And the primary endpoint was the disease-free survival. The risk groups were the intermediate and the high-risk group uh, patient population with a PT2 high-grade and a T4 sarcomatoid PT3. These were the high group. Uh, high group were uh, PT4 and uh, any grade PN1. And uh, the metastatic were uh, NED. So basically, these patients either uh, synchronously or metachronously, they, were, uh, they underwent a resection of their metastatic site. Metastatomy was done. The disease-free survival was, uh, uh, the hazard ratio was 0 0.63, and uh, at 24 months, it was 78.3% for the, uh, the pembrolizumab AM, and uh, for the placebo, it was 67.3%. Uh, when uh, overall survival, there was not much of significant uh, identified. In the emotion trial, it was uh, 778 patients were included, but it was with atazolumab, and uh, 200 milligram uh, was uh, given to the patient IV every uh, th third weekly when compared with placebo. Here also DFS was the uh, 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 primary endpoint and similar uh, uh, risk group profile was there for both the uh, studies. Here the DFS was, uh, uh, hazard ratio was 0 0.93, uh, which was a negative trial and there was not much of significant in the overall survival benefits also. So to discuss what the author mentioned, uh, identified in the keynote uh, 564 and in the emotional trial, the lymph node invasion was one of the you know, uh, uh, factors poor prognostic factors identified for the, in the final histopathy assessment. For the keynote, it was the low proportion was there, 6% of 994 patients were there, but in the emotional trial, it was 11%, that is 83 of 778. So this is a very high risk uh, factor uh, considering the overall prognosis of this patient. The, hence, they would uh, have an early progression even after surgery. The second was the complete metastatectomy, uh, that is a M1 resected with no evidence of disease. So uh, it is also a poor prognostic factor, increased uh, risk of early progression will be there, which a higher proportion was there in the emotion uh, trial, which was 14%, and in the keynote was 6%. So higher disease-free benefit in the emotion than in keynote 564, but still theoretically we were not able to understand why uh, there was not much of benefits identified the DFS. So the possible explanation, what was uh, uh, an unexpected findings were there, that 78% of M1, N0 disease uh, uh, included in the emotion trial had metachronous metastasis resected. That is, recurrence of disease occurring no less than 12 months after the primary nephrectomy. And uh, the synchronous metastasis were 22%. So, atosilumizumab has little effect after nephrectomy and that uh, other factors may have probably the counterbalance the risk of progression among patients enrolled in both the trials. So, to conclude, Patients with lymph node invasion and patients with long-term metachronous M1 treated patients who comprised a greater proportion of patients in the emotion trial than the keynote uh, 564 might not benefit from the adjuvant immune checkpoint in, uh, inhibitor monotherapy. But they might benefit from the upfront immunotherapy combination or the immunotherapy TKI combination as soon as there is a progression seen. So, absence of benefit for the systemic monotherapy compared with observation in those clinical scenarios has been suggested, although with little evidence. So finally, to conclude, these two uh, poor prognostic factors, like the pathology confirmed lymph node invasion and after complete metastatectomy, active surveillance is possible, although very stringent follow-up after surgery, 
would be needed to detect early systemic progression and deliver the best salvage care to these patients rather than giving them adjuvant therapies. Thank you very much.